Have you also noticed that your Dexcom T7 has been having some issues? Let's unpack it and talk about what we can do about it. I'm Christelle and I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 1997 and I've been using the Dexcom T7 for well over two years now. Don't get me wrong, I really like my Dexcom T7, but it does have some issues. But the good news is that a lot of these issues also have solutions. And the issues I want to talk about today are wonky accuracy, not being able to connect with the app, goosenecking, the sensor falling off, long wait time to get replacements, and the occasional sensor shortage. I know I'm not the only one who've had some accuracy issues this year. The reason why some of us have had some issues with inaccurate sensors lately could be that Dexcom, per the March 2025 FDA warning letter, had made a design change to the sensor's internal components that could reduce accuracy. It wasn't bad enough to be a recall, but Dexcom did cease the distribution of the Dexcom T7 sensors that had the material change. And they also reverted their manufacturing back to what it was before. Could you have one of these sensors at home? Maybe. And could that mean that they're less accurate? Maybe. So what can we use this do? There's no public available information that can help you determine whether or not the sensors you have at home are made with a modified material. But if your sensor was manufactured between late 2024 and March 2025, then that's within that window where Dexcom used the altered materials. If your sensor was manufactured within that period, I would do more finger sticks just to check up on accuracy. This date range makes me a little anxious as I'll be traveling outside the US for the next three months. And of my current stash, nine sensors were made in that period. But fingers crossed that they won't all be wonky. If you find that your sensor is consistently inaccurate, you do have a few options. And let's just talk a little bit about accuracy here. So per Dexcom, so per their CGM accuracy guidance, a CGM is considered accurate as long as it's not more than plus minus 20% above or below your finger stick readings when your blood sugars are stable. If your sensor is very inaccurate, you can choose to calibrate it. Dexcom generally does not recommend that you calibrate the sensor unless you're prompted by the app or there's a consistent issue. My rule of thumb is I generally try to not calibrate within the first 12 hours and I only calibrate if I see several finger sticks being more than that 20% plus minus my CGM reading. You calibrate the sensor by doing a finger stick. I usually do more than one to be sure I have an accurate blood sugar reading. You then click the little plus sign, use as calibration, and then add the blood sugar reading. The sensor will then slowly adapt to what you've entered. Calibrations don't always work, unfortunately. Sometimes the sensor won't accept a calibration and sometimes calibrating the sensor will just lead to a sensor failure. If that happens, you have to request a replacement. I'll talk a little bit about replacement issues shortly. Another issue that seems to be happening in the Dexcom T7 world, and this is not something I've experienced myself, but I've seen enough people talk about it that we also have to talk about it in this video. And that is that a lot of people insert their Dexcom T7 sensor at the code in the app, and then it just keeps searching for the sensor, but it never finds it. The theory is that this little magnet is the culprit, as it is used to activate the sensor upon insertion. But if that activation fails, well, the sensor won't be activated. So the theory is that you can take the magnet or any other magnet and wave it sort of over the sensor and that should trigger the pairing process. Again, I haven't been in this situation, so I haven't tried this hack, but if you have, let us know, did it work out for you? And now it's time for a quick ad break. You can make a direct impact on diabetes, healthcare, technology, and treatment by participating in the Type 1 D-Exchange registry. It starts with a quick survey about your life with Type 1 diabetes, and it takes about 15 minutes. After that, you'll have access to your personal portal, where you can see all the ongoing surveys and studies available to you. Plus, some of these studies even offer compensation. Signing up with the T1D Exchange to the link I have down in the video description helps support the Diabetes Strong YouTube channel and allows me to continue to provide free information. Sign up at t1dexchange.org forward slash diabetes strong. Another Dexcom T7 issue that I see popping up across all the different social media channels is goosenecking. If your sensor won't connect, is failing, or just acting weird, look closely at that little hole in the sensor. Is that little wire sticking through? If this happens to you, all that you can do is document it. I would take a photo of it 
and reach out to Dexcom to get a replacement. Okay, so this fourth issue is not a new issue. It's something that I've heard from you guys for years that for some people, the Dexcom D7 just doesn't want to seem to stick to the skin and it falls off before the 10 days are up. And unfortunately, Dexcom now only offers three replacements a year for sensors that fall off. But again, there are things that we can do to make the sensor stick. You can use a Dexcom overlay tape that comes in the box. Just clean your skin with alcohol first. I do not use this tape anymore as it makes me break out in hives, but it's free, so it might be worth a try. Instead, I use the Skin Grip overlay tape, which I just find works much more effectively. It's a soft fabric material. It's easy to apply and remove. I don't break out in hives and it really secures the sensor. Another option is to add skin tag adhesive underneath your sensor. Just apply a little bit to your skin, let it dry out and then apply the sensor on top of it. And then my favorite solution, I wear it somewhere where it doesn't get caught on clothing, door frames, anything like that. And that is usually on my abdomen. Yes, that is not FDA cleared, so it's an off-label placement, but it just works really well for me. The next Dexcom T7 issue that I want to address is a plus two week wait time to get a replacement sensor. I know it varies depending on where you live in the States, but for me, the time it takes from I place my request until I have that Dexcom T7 replacement in my mailbox is at least two weeks. If you're low on sensors or like my situation back in May, where I was a week out from leaving the States for a few months, a two week delivery time is just not going to cut it. So back in May, I learned something new. I called Dexcom and the customer service rep was very nice. And she offered to email me a coupon so I could go pick up a new sensor for free at my local pharmacy. It is worth noting that you need to have refills on your prescription or get a new prescription. That was not a big deal for me. I had plenty of refills and had I not had refills, I can always reach out to my doctor and get her to write me a new prescription. That doesn't cost me anything. The final Dexcom G7 issue that I want to address in this video is the US sensor shortage because occasionally I'll have people comment on my videos that their local pharmacy can't fill their prescription. This doesn't seem to be a national issue. I've never been in a situation where my local pharmacy couldn't fill my prescription. But if you're in this situation, I suggest that you call around to other pharmacies and see if any of them have Dexcom G7 in stock. And this includes online pharmacies. Unless your insurance company insists that you only use one pharmacy to fill your prescription, you can move your prescription around. And even if they have one preferred pharmacy, well, if that pharmacy can't fill your prescription, you can call your insurance company and see if they can make an exception. My insurance company will allow me to fill one to three months of supplies in a non-preferred pharmacy. So maybe yours will as well. It can't hurt to try. If you're still with me, thank you. You might be interested in my YouTube membership. Here I post monthly members only Q and A style videos. You get early access to most of my videos, priority answers to questions, and you get to support me and this channel. And remember, this video is based on personal experience and community reports. Always consult with Dexcom or your healthcare provider for device specific troubleshooting and guidance. See you next time.